The guest is Yvonne Willering. What a wonderful career in netball. Yvonne played for the Silver Ferns and coached the Silver Ferns. Still at the top of her game, Yvonne travels the world coaching the coaches. A classic baby boomer living the philosophy of the beat goes on. We welcome Yvonne Willering as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Yvonne Willering, welcome <laughs> to The Beat Goes <laughs> <Yeah>. On. <laughs> A classic baby boomer, Yvonne. Not, not like the way you put that. You <laughs> just aged me. Are we allowed, is, is a gentleman allowed to ask a lady what year she was born or should we skip that uh, very quickly? Oh, I do know that I was given uh, the seniors card for my birthday and it says congratulations. I'm oh, going, well. that was not a nice gift. <laughs> but no, I'm 62. It was a wonderful generation, wasn't it, the baby boomer generation? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, and you look at like what's happening today and I know all the modern technology, but there was things that, you know, certainly about communication, but it's just on a different level. And yeah, sometimes, like I'd say to players, have you heard of like Anne Murray? And, and that's just blankness. And I'm <laughs> going, you've missed out, you've missed out. Now, we want to talk uh, about netball, of course, and your wonderful career in net netball, but uh, we're going to go back to the start. It all started in Holland, didn't it? Whereabouts in Holland? Den Haag, Schaffenhagen, uh, yeah, the Hague, the Hague, the Hague, <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, we came out when I was nine years old and we came by boat and uh, Dad was guaranteed, like, you know, obviously accommodation and a job when we got here. Neither of those two eventuated, so pretty tough start, you know, when we first got here, but uh, certainly made the most of the opportunities and uh, yeah, you know, we've really made our life in New Zealand. And you came out here in 1959. Mm. And when did you first see this? strange game for a young Dutch girl called mm. netball. Yeah, it wasn't until I was at high school actually. I was at Rutherford High School, now called Rutherford College, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, my phys ed teacher, June Mariu, um, oh, it's now, yeah, she actually is now Dame June Mariu, and uh, sh she was a silver fern in her own right, and she introduced me. I was quite tall in those days, not to the, compared to the players nowadays, but certainly in those days. And she introduced me and uh, I had immediate success um, and sort of never looked back from there. I played goal defence uh, in that area of court. I, I guess I naturally could read play, I could see where the yeah. ball was going to go and I loved the team aspect of it. Um, I'd always been involved in like athletics where it was all about you, but it was quite nice to have that reliance on other people as well. So yeah, and also you, you got, even in those days, you got to go places, you know, and to, and to share, the, uh, sh to share you know, the highs and lows with your teammates uh, so it wasn't sort of sort of just you know in isolation with your own ability it was sharing that ability with others and you played in the silver ferns yeah, very fortunate. Uh, I was under Dame Lois Muir the whole time, and um, yeah, I was there for a ten-year period. But totally different than what oh. it is nowadays. I mean, so it was we didn't even know about hydration in those days, <laughs> for goodness sake. You know, so yeah, totally amateur. I mean, I would have yeah, loved yeah, to have played. Yeah. I mean, there was mm. great aspects in that area, but I would have loved to have played in this era because now we've our top athletes are fully professional. So you know, they've got time to train and to do everything else, whereas we actually had limited preparation because most of us, well, in fact, all of us held down full-time jobs as well as well as you know representing as, as our country being with yeah so at, and in the end I actually was a microbiologist by trade and uh, it came to a time when I had to make a decision because I couldn't play netball to the level that I wanted to play and also do justice to the job so fortunately I actually worked for netball New Zealand and really netball just became yeah, my whole profession and you know and I was very fortunate to um, you know, actually ov obviously get paid for doing what I loved. So what did mum and dad who were from Holland think of this game called netball they've probably never yeah. seen it before and, no, and here's no. their daughter <laughs> being a big star in netball what did yeah. they think they, yeah, they were pretty passionate they used to always come to our club games as well but what I really enjoyed about it they didn't just come to see me play they actually came to watch the team play because even when I'd made the silver ferns they still went to watch the the club competition and watch my club team collegiate playing so it was pretty cool they you know but you know so they were introduced to the sport but even nowadays when they're watching the game you know they're saying you know we don't understand some of the rules well, yeah. don't worry about it lots of people don't <laughs> you know so yeah now it at this wonderful age, um, <laughs> yeah, with all that wealth of experience, <laughs> are you still sought after from other countries throughout the world saying, we need someone to come and uh, really knock us into shape? Is, does that uh, happen? or? Yeah, I contract mm. coach and yeah. I really enjoy that, but I spend probably more time with coaches now rather than with players. Okay. So, you know, I, I like to go and um, I do still take teams like when they come to New Zealand shores, but it's more like a one or two, you know, um, 
day sort of thing, so it's all care, no responsibility. So I don't have it sort of at the end. Although having said that, I've just taken a Nepal North team and I haven't taken a provincial team for years. And that was, that was a new experience because it's, it's just changed so much. You know, I think that we've got far more priority now on the ANZ champs than we had the provincials. But in my area, when I played and, you know, played and also I coached for Auckland and then I went to Harbour, it was major. The provincial champs were major. A bit like rugby when, you know, we had the provincials. But now, obviously, television is totally gauged on the ANZ champs. So, you know, that's where the priority is now. So it's a bit sad because, that, you know, there were some really memorable moments, you know, in the provincial champs. And uh, that's where the players of the futures come from. Are you, would you be considered the Graham Henry of netball? Oh, no, I think there's a few of us <laughs> around for that. I don't think so, no. Now, the other night, the other night, or well, some weeks ago, but it was the other night, um, we beat Australia for two games in a row. Did you, look, you must have looked on with pride. I mean, this was a, the Constellation Cup, yeah. and of course, um, the ANZ champs, we won that this year. Is this going to be the golden years for netball for the next uh, 10 years, do you think? Or uh, <laughs> can you see any cracks in the system? Uh, I'll let you know after this quad series. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, and we always compare ourselves against Australia, and so we should, because we're the two leading netball nations you know, in the world. So you'll always have that. Um, but yeah, to be able to win the game over in Australia when we've of, often been deemed chokers that we can't win over there. So to do it with Magic and the ANZ champs and then obviously the Silver Ferns again, yeah, I think it's lifted us This to is what you've level. been fighting for all your life. When you went into coaching, uh, you now had young girls playing the game and you were getting them ready for battle. And the other night, really, it was the culmination of all yep. those battles, wasn't it? I think the one thing that we tend to lack is consistency. And I think sometimes, in part, that is because we tend to, and I've spoken to players about this, we tend to get score focus. And you see it in a lot of sports, we get score focus rather than performance focus. So as soon as we start thinking, hey, we can win this game, and we did that the world champs, you're in trouble because you're going into the future. And that is something that some players are still having to learn. Certainly, I learned that uh, as a coach. Uh, we were in a situation, one of the world champs, 99 world champs uh, held here in Christchurch, you know, we went into that last quarter seven goals up, you know, and we lost it by one. And the reason for that is, I believe, is that we all thought, hey, we've got this game won and we still had 15 minutes to play. So, you know, so, I so what you're saying, you were score that. focused as, a pay, as yeah. opposed to game focused. Yeah, and you look at a yeah. lot of sports, even the All Blacks in that mm. last game against France, you have a look at it. We were just hoping that those last, those were the longest five minutes at the <laughs> end, you know, we were just waiting for that to go. Whereas, you know, if you, know, if you truly believe in your total performance, you should have just kept playing. Now, the beat goes on. It's all about challenges for um, our age group and the baby boomers. Um, still got a mountain to climb, still got a book to write, a CD to record. Um, what have you got left to do, uh, Yvonne? What's, what's your... What's on my bucket list? <laughs> <laughs> what's on the bucket list? <laughs> yeah. What would yeah. you like to do? I don't know. I just don't like um, limitations, age being a limitation, you know. And, and yeah, it, it just doesn't come into it. So that's why when you ask my age, I didn't even think about it. Because <laughs> it's actually irrelevant. I mean, there are certain things that I guess you, you don't do as much as other times. Like I actually still own a beach buggy. Will I drive it? Mm, probably not. I probably will sell it soon, you know. But yeah, I, I just... I've I feel sad when people uh, say, oh, you know, like, yeah, there's an age restriction on anything you do. I think it's a natural progression that you, you stop doing one thing and start doing something else. So Now, in the end, when you looked at it, what, what was the, the, the best moment? Playing in the Silver Ferns or coaching them to a victory? <laughs> if you had to pick one, which one would you pick? Oh, that is difficult. Because um, you've done both, haven't you? Yeah, no, it's, it's just a different thrill, yeah. um, really. Uh, as a player, I mean, yeah, just being part of that whole winning unit. Um, if, you, if you'd ask me, is it easier as a player or as a coach, I'd say as a player. Because your responsibility is the performance, whereas the coaches judge on results. Whether you like or not, a coach is judge on results, you yes. know. So, because sometimes you want to hold up a sign to say, I didn't teach him to miss the shots or whatever. So, but as a coach, yeah, the, just a thrill. I mean, when I coached Auckland um, for quite a period of time and we won the provincial championships, you know, I mean, that was a buzz. And then I went over, over the other side um, of the bridge and we did the same. So, yeah, you, um, those are the highs. 
uh, but as a coach, you tend to reflect more on your losses probably uh, rather than your highs. But as a player, it is all about those highs. You ask any player, Silverfern player, what's the magic moment? It's winning a Commonwealth gold or it's winning a world championship. Now, do you have? Did you have sleepless nights? Um, being a coach, uh, worried about getting the right results, or you know, the, your job depended on it. Did, yep. did, were there worries? Yeah course there are you know but I think the most important thing is and it's hard though is that you can't be score focused yes. you know so you can't put that onto your players you know it's all about the performance because I say to the players look the score will take care of itself you know you put the performance and if you're the better team the score is going to reflect that and you've got to go into it with that attitude because otherwise if you are score driven you're too much into the into the future you've got to stay in the present so yeah, it's an outcome but sometimes as a coach it's um it's quite, it's quite hard. Like I do some speaking engagement at a probus club, you know, and people say, oh, you're much nicer and real person, you know, <laughs> and it's because you are judged. You are much what, nicer and real yeah, person. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, thanks, you know. But you are judged on the image that's presented, you know, in front of the media. So actually the media has a responsibility yeah. there as well because they can make or break you as yes. well. Now, is it, is the nature of being a coach, is it inherently unfair that you are blamed for the loss of the, of the team? Because, I mean, I can watch a game of rugby or a game of netball and uh, uh, if the team doesn't win, uh, my first instinct is to blame the players. What's wrong with you? And yet the yeah. media seems to say, get rid of the coach, get rid of the coach. Yeah. That's unfair. I think that's unfair. <laughs> oh, thanks. I agree with you. <laughs> but it's the yeah. players that are playing, isn't it? Yeah, but when you take on the roles, you know that. That's yeah. part of the responsibility. Like when Graham Henry sat in that box, you know, and luckily the penalty he went for the All Blacks yeah. and not against them because he could have gone hero to zero as well. Exactly. We all know that. When mm. we take on the jobs, but only in, in the sports where we have those expectations, we expect you know the All Blacks to win. We expect the Silver Ferns to, to win. So when you take on those roles, that's yeah. the responsibility that goes with it. So you know that's, that's part of it. So you just can't complain about it. Just get on with it. Now in the end, uh, Yvonne, are you glad Mum and Dad brought you out to New Zealand? Yeah, initially obviously it was a tough time for them in particular because they've left all their family at you know, back back in Holland, but uh, it was quite interesting. I'm not really into awards because you you know you can go from good coach to bad coach within one game, basically. You know, but I was given the Office of New Zealand Order of Merit, so I was given you know an award, and um, it actually it meant a lot to me. Uh, and obviously, it's for Nepal and everything else, but probably it was more so for my parents um, because you know it meant that I, we've come to our adopted country and we'd made it in our adopted country. So yeah, it had quite a bit of meaning uh, probably more to more for them than anyone else now that you brought that out imagine uh, the struggle to come to New Zealand the struggle here and then have a young daughter who you know receives the New Zealand order of merit wow they must have felt so happy so very proud of you yeah and my brother's done well too so yeah we we've all made it here so I think that's that, that's what it was all about you know and I know you know we've spoken about recently that they did have those struggles but um, you know even knowing you know, then what they know now, they stood have gone ahead with it. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a totally different lifestyle for us anyway. I mean, I, I loved obviously all what I had in Nederland. I'm not you know, taking that away, but uh, certainly we've uh, made a lifestyle here, and yeah, we've become part of the country, I suppose. One day, would there be a nice little book all about the life and times of Yvonne Willering? Is that on the horizon? <laughs> like the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny because I go to Provost clubs and I speak, you know, and um, they go, oh, you should write a book, you know. Mm. And, um, well, everyone's doing it. Yeah, well, that's why. So why would I want to do it then if everyone <laughs> else is doing it? So, uh, no, I'm quite happy being where I am at the moment. Yvonne, look, it's been great talking and, uh, you know, thanks for coming in today. We don't get an opportunity to talk to great sports people very often, but uh, today has been one of them. Yeah, so sure. um, we're going to see you again in lights, hopefully. Coaching Ooh. some team up there in the sky? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> don't know about some famous team. Thank you, Eva. <laughs>